Let me stay, uh, start by thanking you because you're playing uh, one of the uh, few good journalists uh, in cinema. Usually mm. they're a despicable profession. No, um, it's not the way I view it. In, uh, in, in contrary to popular opinion, it's, it's not the way I see it. Well, we could right. use uh, some, some more of that kind that, that remind us that uh, journalism could be a good uh, profession. Right? I think it's taken a battering just recently, but I think there are lots of really very good journalists out there, some people who are still fighting the good fight. And, you know, I mean, not just sort of, uh, you know, in the Western world where there's a perceived free press, but places where, there isn't, where, where the press is, you know, repressed, right. there are still people fighting and putting their lives on the line. Mm -hmm. To get uh, to get the truth out there, and uh, you have to you have to just be uh, uh, you know just I mean I'm totally in awe of people like that who mm -hmm. who, who fight for their for, for what they think is right. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. One of these was uh, Stieg Larsson, mm -hmm. pretty much he was a journalist, political journalist. Mm -hmm. um, still, um, Michael Blomquist is an idealized version mm -hmm. of him. Uh, Do you think also, might be too simple said, uh, but, uh, that he is a kind of intellectual bond? <laughs> I mean, he gets the girls, uh, he don't. goes after the big bad guys, uh, uh, Jesse does so I without the guys. Saying, you would, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately you're probably only saying that because I am James Bond, so, <laughs> no, <laughs> so no, that no, makes no, sense. No, no. I mean, in, in a, you know, he's a, I, I, what I like about him is he's a, He's a man of very secure. He's very secure in his maleness. He's very secure in in his. Uh, he's straight. He's honest, um, and that and that's one of the reasons I think that he has. So in the books, he has many more relationships. I mean, it's, uh, we, we kind of tone that down somewhat, um, and it's um, it's a uh, you know it's um, it's a fascinating part of his personality that he he is absolutely prepared to sort of have this woman, this extraordinary woman, sort of look after him, take care of him, you know, mm. save his life. He has no problem with it. It's a, it's a, he's very happy for her to do it. Um, like, I, I understand that you read the book uh, before uh, the movie was ever mentioned, even mm. before the Swedish movie, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, uh, did you think back then that's, that could be an interesting role, or did that never come up to you? It did, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, look, I'm an actor. I, I'm always looking for, for, for interesting roles to play, and I read the book and thought that it would be a... Um, and it would be, you know, it would be a good role to, to, to play one day, but uh, I didn't... That's the last I thought about, about it, and mm. it's not until I, I got the script from, from Sony that I... I, I mm. You know, well, here we are. <laughs> Rooney Mara just said uh, she spent... Uh, doesn't know how much, uh, several months in Sweden to prepare for the role. Did you have the luxury? You're a pretty busy man. Uh, did you have... I didn't have that luxury, no. I mean, I, I, I came straight from one job, uh, from the Cowboys movie I did, to, uh, to, to that one. So, but, but, you know, they cross over. And while I was filming Cowboys, I was working on, you know, you know Dragon Tattoo. I mean, that's you know, what you have to do. So I had the script and I was... On the, on the phone with David as much as possible and, and, and just, you know, we're having costume meetings and things in New Mexico. So, so hopefully by the time I get to Sweden, I'm, I'm up to speed. Thankfully, what, what we did, though, in Sweden was that we shot most of the exteriors because we were, you know, obviously the problem in, uh, you know, with Sweden is as the winter goes on, darkness comes about three o'clock in the afternoon, so your day's about five hours, four hours long, if you're, if you're lucky. And um, um, so we shot all of the exteriors which main, was mainly kind of getting in and out of cars, going into houses, and so we broke ourselves in gently. I could, mm. I could become uh, the character. I had time to sort of mm. form it. Must have been quite a contrast from New Mexico to the coldest winter It's, in Sweden. It certainly was, yeah, on record, I think, wasn't it, they said. Yeah. Yeah. And you also uh, gained weight for the role, I think. Uh, it I must be particularly mm. hard since the movies uh, were so close together. You were pretty, no, not skinny, but... Scrawny, I, I, I think pretty you said, scrawny was, in, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. in Cowboys and Aliens, and then, uh, well, not chubby, but uh, more I normal. I, I just, I, I, you know, I wanted to be in the mindset of a man that had more important things to think about, and that was really, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, that's a kind of, um, uh, that's all I, you know, that's, for me, he wanted to be thinking about his, uh, uh, his job and who he is, and, um, mm. you know, it's a, mm. it's, 
Especially in Germany, the uh, Swedish version, which isn't that old, uh, mm. two years ago, uh, was very popular. Uh, did you watch that one uh, before or after shooting? I didn't, no. Did you I, avoid it consciously? I, 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 before I, I received the script, no, I hadn't avoided it consciously. In fact, I, I had all three DVDs sitting there ready to watch. and I, As soon as the script came in, I thought, well, actually, no, that's, that's just going to be detrimental to what I'm doing. So I, I, I pushed them aside and concentrated on this and concentrated on the book. Mm. Uh, and maybe I can t tell you that I think um, your character is a little stronger than uh, uh, the version of Blomquist that Michael Nyquist plays. Mm -hmm. uh, was that uh, written so in the script or was that the part that you brought into? Because he's a guy that threatens, for uh, example, uh, uh, Lisbeth Salander's uh, employer. He barges into her uh, room. I I I, I didn't th I, I just saw that it, it, the strength of his he has he's a journalist I don't think barging I felt that that's barging into people's rooms was part of his uh, his remit as a as a journalist I mean he'd he'd have to be pushy you know that, and, and a good investigative journalist would be pushy and would be able to sort of not threaten but say look these are the facts I'm just laying them out for you here and that if you if you choose to you know react to them what is your comment and that. And having that strength and having that ability to do that was just part of it. But he wasn't a, uh, you know, he's not a he's not a, a, a macho male. He's just a, a man. And 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 what I thought was, uh, and what appealed to me so much was his dishonesty, this this sort of straightforwardness. Mm. And I think that's in in a sense what Salanda is so is so enamoured by. Uh, most men in her life have just abused her, and those few that haven't have, have just been straight with her and said, "Look, I, you know, I don't care who you are, I, I but I like you and I need you, and you know." Uh, and he says that I'd like you to come and help me, and if you don't want to, then it's fine. We'll move on, even though he's she's hacked into his computer and stolen his life.